All right. How does Andrew Broom's earphones stay in his head? Has he got a little bit like chewing gum on them or something to keep them in place or like Gorilla Grip earlobes? Like he darts all over the place and the things don't even move. My ears fire them out like Pop-Tarts. Pop so cool. All the stunts are performed by professionals. Do not attempt this yourself. So Razor's stopped dragging their feet and finally dropped the broom shift skates. They've been spotted in videos. Pictures of the boxes were leaked last week, but they are finally here and everyone's buzzing for the lad. It's a well-deserved pro skate. Defo missed a trick though, not having the earphones on the cuff with a little bit of text that said skinny mine. The edit dropped with a skate, which is very good. Filmed and edited by Ant Medina. Soundtrack by Big X, the plug, which is absolutely perfect. See, I'm from Texas. Broom's got loads of sturdy heel rolls. Plenty of tech tricks will skate any kind of terrain. There's a bit in there that actually looks like Texas Ninja Warrior. And there's also the biggest wall ride I've seen in a minute. I touched God. The edit was so banging, somebody's actually reposted the whole thing on YouTube already. What are you actually doing? Sticking with Razor's loyal team rider Alex Burston was looking to get the ball rolling on a second pro skate for himself. I mean, it has been 10 years since his first pro SL skate. And bar like illness, he is very active with the content. Just recently, he's had the latest Manchester Winter Wars project. Manchester. He's out there in the bleak, cold northern nights, putting in the graft. He's got an iconic style, so uh, you know, why not? Give him another skate. Just swine. <laughs> yeah, give me another skate. Good shit. And those are not these blue yokes that were spotted in somebody's pit. I feel like those would pair well with like a baby blue velour suit with like some diamantes encrusted onto it. Maybe like a crown and like the razor symbol. Yeah, man. There is a gap in the team seeing as Derek Henderson quite honourably stepped down, recognising that he couldn't commit to fulfilling his idea of like what a pro skater should be and very purposely like opening it up for others to come in and get that recognition. Cody Refner's now also skating USD skates. So, you know, you could like honor somebody who's like sticking with the team and been there for ages. There is a rumor about Jason Adriani getting a skate. Aside from him though, who would you pick out of Burston, Dotson and Sneaky for the next pro skate? If you're into the video, you can support me by giving me a like. I've also got the new spotty boned out merch with the dog on the back with all the bones in his mouth and a little sig there. That's up on my website. There's also a couple of long sleeves and hoodies left from the Gale Splat range. You can become a Patreon or a channel member, sneak peeks, exclusive videos, all that kind of good stuff, much appreciated. Getting with the times a little bit, it seems like razors are on the way to updating the Colt soul plate. My favorite thing about the Colt was the old groove. Shout out to Mitchell Evans who described it as looking like a prawn cracker. <laughs> These new ones kind of remind me a little bit of those heinous Solomon Y body soul plates. Disgusting! But I imagine they're a lot better looking in real life. Have you seen Loco Skate's little skate park they've been building? Heaven knows how they've got the permission to build all this stuff, but it's progressively getting madder. They've now recreated the Barceloneta ledge and it looks ridiculously good. Build a few more iconic street spots down there and have a big comp, man, like the World Tour comp, but you don't even have to leave Loco's yard. Get it sponsored by like Boost Energy or something like that, because we're never going to get like Red Bull back, are we? Kudo has been on a rampage, mate. He's gone full sedan, headbutt mode. Like, he's taken everybody down. He won the park event at Fees Montpellier after the finals got rained out. Takeshi the old dog bagged further as well. So he's still got plenty of fight left in him. Kudo also won the spine while he was at it. He gave the Fees death rail comp a good go as well, but that was eventually won by Victor Dam. The setup on that rail comp is utterly ridiculous. I've seen one guy actually lying down on the stairs, like just underneath like the safety tape. Not that that safety tape is gonna do anything to stop somebody like hurtling at you. But why would you then like offer your head as a crash barrier instead? Like, what was he thinking? The rail is fairly steep and finishes really close to the floor. So you're kind of like taking all your energy and just smashing it straight into the ground, making it a little bit tricky to land things. Then it's only a really short platform and you're into the dirt. And after that, it's just a gaggle of people like trying to stop you from falling in the river. It looks like some of the most stressful conditions for a rail comp ever. And it's not like it's the first time they've done it or anything like that. They do it all the time. Victor also continued his winning streak at the ESA comp. 
Other results from fees, you had Young, Haru, he won AM Park and AM Spine. Mimi Yoga has been on a good run as well, winning the Pro Women's Park at fees and the NL, and she's only 13. Japan are taking over. That Jin Wu lad who's like 13 years old won an X Games gold, man. They're going to have it all wrapped up soon. Kudo also won the NL clump. Is it just standard now to be doing double flips? Like, the French government must be funding G-Force training for him or something like that. It was like, high G human centrifuges thing. What, they just spin you around? Like, his organs must be like, what on earth is going on, man? I think we're upside down again, like. In more good news for him, he's got a new sponsor. Not a boot sponsor though, Original Sports Nutrition. I almost feel like that's actually more positive, like external brands showing interest in people like Julian. I mean, he might actually get paid as well. Julian skates Solomons. He was briefly seen in the Razors because I think like somebody had either stolen his Solomons or they'd broken or something like that. And I'm pretty sure he's said that like no brand has actually approached him after he's left Trigger. Like which brand do you see him fitting in with and like, Who's gonna give him a deal that's gonna make him go, yeah, like, yeah, stick my name on that product. Like, he just seems to be doing his own thing, like, does what he wants, wins comps, gets the money there, got a little bit of sports nutrition money now as well. Like, who's gonna be able to, like, give him that big deal? Faction posted up a limited edition white tactical V1 with the new streamlined stealth soul plate due out mid-June. According to you lot, it's a hit. It's definitely their best looking skate so far. There was so much interest in it, they're actually going to be opening pre-orders on June 5th. The colorway would have been ideal to match China's Create Original Frames, but it's a team skate. I reckon Clark knows what he's doing and that China skate will be just around the corner. They also announced new team rider Anik Kerhoffs, which was really cool to see. Mesmer are also on the ball announcing new team rider Julia Kamenda, who is sick. She just seems to be clued in on what's good. And it feels like Rollerblade is starting to see more progression in terms of like female representation and also representation of like the youth in the sport, with Mesmer announcing Sebastian Castro the other month. Another person who's like just seems to get it, like really cool style and makes things look good. I don't know if Kaho Mom is on Rosie's radar, but she should be. Another young Japanese skater who is incredible, really sick style, who took gold at NL Vert and bronze in the park. She'd be a great addition to that team, and it also looks like Fabiola's moving away from the whole Rosie's thing. She's been spotted skating the A on Feinbergs. And from what I'm hearing, USD have got something brewing. So like, watch this space. Dead Wheels have celebrated the decade of dead and re-upped the load of wheels you can get your hands on again. So you've got the basement wheels, you've got the two easy wheels, Sakura. They've also got a line of t-shirts you can get a hold of. 10 years as a rollerblading brand is pretty good going. So a uh, nice one to dead. Be really nice to see an edit to go with this thing. Talking a basement, people have been speaking about a basement 909 for a while now, but recently things seem to have been picking up a little bit more momentum. I was a bit surprised the basement 909 wheel, Julio posted on his stories during the Blake Up, didn't get way more attention, especially with the egg emoji suggesting an eggshell colour, which also kind of fits with the shell that was seen in the background of another story. But there's now been another leak, which I've blurred because it was taken down, and I think it'd be a bit of a knob move to recirculate it, but it's another strong suggestion there's a basement skate coming. I'm already dreaming about how good that edit's gonna be. My take on leaks, it's not the worst thing in the world, but there are levels. If a brand drops a pick, I take that as intentional, not really a leak and fair game. If it comes from outside the brand, that's like putting your bare foot in their brand new trainers before they do. What are you really getting out of that? Yeah, you shouldn't really be leaving your brand new trainers just lying around, but do you really expect people to just jam their foot into them? If there's been a leak, it hasn't spread like wildfire and has been taken down. Recirculating it, it's like hearing what happened to the trainers the first time round, knowing the person got them cleaned after that happened, and then sticking your bare foot in them before they've actually tried them on themselves. <laughs> Take a little bit of their untouched birthday cake on the way out as well. That's delicious, mate, cheers. Not the worst thing, but what do you actually get out of it? Another one I think has slipped past people is the Ilya training course that you can now buy on a monthly subscription for $20. Have you seen the mad training that he does? It'd be like a modern day Ivan Drago training course, man. He'd have you doing all sorts like out there in the snow training with bears. I'd hope though for that $20 he's also doing you little courses and how to like make all his mad setups like they get those keyboards on the skates and things like that. I totally respect Iliar's dedication to like improving himself and bettering his abilities. But even more so when he uses all that skill and stuff to do totally daft 
stuff. That is amazing. Getting yourself in like optimal condition to just do silly stuff better. Solomon is uh, old skates. This Solomon. is future skates. If you don't have $20 lying about, Nils is putting out the free foot exercises. Nils is like Mr. Miyagi. He'll have you waxing ledges with your feet. Wax on. Wax off. Kaiser dropped the marketing for their new slider wheels and it was like throwing meat to hyenas. People just went in. Sliders features a unique shape that makes wheel bite almost impossible. <laughs> I mean, isn't that the point? I think maybe you could get wheel bite on them if you tried really, really hard to like purposefully do it. But otherwise, like that's just the whole point of them, isn't it? The part that got really rinsed was the mention of a unique shape. The Higgs boson has not been talked about this much since 2003. Loads of the comments were just Higgs boson. It's a Higgs boson. That's just a Higgs boson. My favourite ones were research and development forgot the research part. Kai's are playing mind games with us. Just call them Biggs Hosen. No one will ever know. <laughs> A couple of posts later, they did put their ante up with the mind game Higgs, acknowledging like that's where the inspiration came from, which might have been a better first place, but I guess people are always gonna take the mick out of things like this. The thing does have one less side, so it's a hexagon rather than a hectagon, so not fully like a wish.com situation. Interestingly, the thing comes in three different sizes, I guess varying how much you want to use them to like actually keep you in place and like how much resistance you want there. There's another new wheel brand on the scene, Cymatics. The term was coined by Swiss physician Hans Jenny and is a subset of modular vibration phenomena. In this case it means swirly wheels poured in the USA. You've got a pink flat top bullet wheel 58mm 92A, a grey 58mm 88A, an 88mm 88A teal and violet wheel, a 45mm 103A anti-rocker wheel in pink grey white marble and a couple of t-shirts to match as well. The operation is being run by Jordan and Josh Glowicki and Fritz Pietzner, a good bunch of lads well known within the industry that you can back. I know there's loads of wheel brands about, but I see it like this. Surely wheels are the things that you change the most. So you need wheel options. It's a competitive market. So you're gonna quickly find out if they're good or not. And if they are good, it's better for us. And it's better for the market because everybody else has to up their game. Did anyone notice Stefan Brando won a trip to London from British Airways? What? No way, are you kidding? Robbie Pitts has got himself some vibrant Slimer Green Pro Wish Frames, a product I can genuinely believe is exactly how the pro wants it. All the product shots for these have been sick. Great to see a treasure of rollerblading getting a product. How has he not got some pro knee pads though? I know I've been harping on about it, but that knee slide from the beginning of Skate Hard 3000 is sensational. Let's get into a few more edits. Eugen Ellen's new wheel promo is chaotic. It's got the most jarring soundtrack from Chainsaw Man, but I absolutely love it. There's something about anime soundtracks. They're so bonkers and turbo. But then after a while of hearing them, they get stuck in your head. Either way, I think it's worked really well with this skating. I mean, it made me laugh because it's completely nuts. The edit is full of Eugen stuff, like staunchly his style of skating, and he does it stupidly well. My favorite bit was the Neg Mac drop wheelbarrow to this garden gnome fishing stall. Junk you Park dropped this little insta edit and it's the one. I kind of feel like he's opening up all sorts of doors in rollerblading. All the forward thinking moves are done with such authority. It feels like it just becomes an instant classic. Blank teamed up with Taylor Cobran to do Blank California Dreaming. The team all met out in Los Angeles to skate some classic spots. Loads of great skating in there. You got some tech bits from like Talbot, Sean Keane. Really great to see Ariel Sun in there as well as Becky Statello, plus full time madman BJ Bernhardt. Cameron also teamed up with Ivan the Rez on Bunkers San Francisco, where he skates the former military bunkers in the coast of San Francisco. With all of Ivan's stuff, it is beautifully shot. He is only dropping you that elite level stuff. It is quality over quantity, and when it drops, it's always just unreal. 
a pleasure to watch and a really interesting concept focusing on just skating the bunkers, like dedicating time, going back with repeat visits to get the stuff done. Really intriguing spots, well utilized by Cameron, like exploring all the mad terrains and getting to grips with all the crooks and crannies. A superb piece that definitely deserves more attention. Another absolute looker of an edit is Joe in Edo's collaboration for their clothing line. I know the pre-orders are closed now, but it's well worth talking about the edit. Carson Boyson is an artist, man. He could film me eating skips and it'd look award-winning. Combine that with Joe's flowing skating and you're on to an absolute winner. Putting specific tricks to the side, he is just good at rolling around and movements on the skates. He makes it look cool to just have the skates on. There's skating in the Tottenham DIY skate park, which is far bigger and more gnarly than it looks like. There's bits of him tearing up South Bank skate park and I know Another classic Royal Oak. Again, another edit that deserves way more attention. Continuing with the flowing skating, Nicola Torelli has put out a promo for his movie line wheel. I really do enjoy the longer wizard skating edits, seeing people getting like stuck into the terrain, using those skills and like unusual obstacles. And Torelli is pretty decent at it as well. Sticking with wizard, they've also introduced the wizard advance 176 and the PR84 frame, meaning those are now available in three different sizes to better accommodate all boot sizes. Talking of frames, this is some of the best executed marketing I've seen in a while. Create Original smashed it out of the park with their coffee line. You've got the vanilla latte, the cappuccino, the iced coffee and the mocha. The advertising got me really hungry for these cappuccino flapjacks at the corner shop near me does. Oh my goodness, they are so good. You can just tell when somebody's put a little bit of thought and love into their releases and it goes a long way because people seem to really like this. Nathan Bentley drops what I believe is his seventh solo edit special case and the guy absolutely loves an awkward spot and tricky terrain. Massive respect to Nathan who is totally dedicated. If you follow him on his social media, you see he's always got lists of like spots and tricks ideas and he actually goes out there and gets it done. And there seems to be a running theme of like hazardous spots. Spots and trick combinations that I reckon people are always gonna like underestimate and undervalue how hard or difficult they are to do these things. And to do it all on his own, like doing the tricks multiple all times to get all the different angles. Fair play to him, man. And the last one, something a little bit different. Fast forward presented by Lazo. This thing is gnarly, like jam packed full of raw energy. It's so exciting to witness. Like almost instantly, you can tell this video is going to be pivotal for quad skating. You're gonna have so many people citing this video as the reason they got into quad skating or the reason like they went out there and just gave it their all. This is the video that's gonna be setting the standards for years to come. You can tell everybody skating is full of passion. There is no holds barred. It's like you're seeing them discover the limits and then push it a little bit further. It's definitely like a real moment. And shout out to Ali Tong, like her skating in it is unbelievable, man. And oh my goodness, that hill bomb, man. That was frightening. Like much respect for doing that. Cheers for watching. Thanks to all my patrons for the support and keeping me going. You can join them from as little as three quid a month. Here's a couple of other videos you can watch and I'll uh, catch you again soon. Spotty dog.